Thank you, Father. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you for the miracles. We thank you for your power. We thank you for salvation. We thank you that faith is in us. We thank you for the power of agreement. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We bless you. We just honor you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you thanks. Thank you for touching us. Thank you for touching our family. Thank you for touching those that we love. Thank you, Lord, for help in the midst of storms. Thank you for hope when there is no hope. Thank you for peace and calm in the midst of chaos. We just thank you. We praise you. We plead the blood of Jesus over this service, over every person that has come, over every person here. We plead the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. We thank you for the power of your word that sets men free. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless you, Father. We bless you. We worship you. Bless you, Lord. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you, Lord, that you are healing people right now. This moment, we speak healing to every sick body. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing. We declare faith is rising, that healing is taking place now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Everything about you was built to go forward. You were created to move. The Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. God created us with the power to be animated. You are an emotional person. You can deny it all you want. You are full of emotion. Look at your neighbor and say, you know it's the truth. You can act staid and reserved and cool and calm and all collected up and stuff, but you are full of emotion God created us that way some folk they control their emotion better than others I understand when children are growing up they haven't learned the social behavior sometimes they just say and do whatever they want to do we name them we call them going through stages and we call it the terrible twos. It ought to be the terrific twos. We call it the terrible twos and threes. It ought to be the tremendous twos and threes. But we're animated. You have energy. You have emotion. You have energy to do things. However, some of us, you're not going to like this. But I'm going to say it anyway. Some folks get stuck. Even folks that have been animated, even folks that have been high achievers, even folks that have been to school and been to the school of hard knocks and done this and that and written the books and written the songs and been all over the world and traveled and made plenty of money, even those folks sometimes get stuck. The Lord put it in my spirit this week that I needed to come by here and talk to you and tell you that it's time to get up. Yeah. Reminds me of the young man that his mom came in and said, Get up, you got to go to school. He 
said, I don't want to go to school. Said, the kids don't like me. They call me names. They don't listen to me. Some of them are even bullies. She said, get up. You have to go to school. He said, I don't want to go to school. She said, get up. You've got to go. You're the principal. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you are. There is a time to get up. There are numerous scriptures in the Bible that tell us to get up. It doesn't say you don't have to if you're stuck. It says get up, arise, move, stand up, get up. Change your position, change your posture. Sometimes just getting up and changing your posture changes everything. Sometimes all you have to do is get up. When the devil knocks you down and knocks you back and pushes you over and you want to quit and you want to give up and you feel like you are stuck and nobody cares and maybe you do, do feel like the kids don't like you and the kids don't say anything kind to you and they call you names and they even bully you, it's still time to get up. Look at your neighbor and say, get up. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. We are living in a time when we have to get up. We are living in a day and age that is different than what we have been through before. It is a different time. It is a different culture. It is a different circumstance. It is a different whatever. Everything has changed. And we cannot stay, remain stagnant. Without moving, without life, we cannot stay where we are. Because when I read the Bible, I read that we are living in the last days. The transition has begun. You've heard me say it. We are, we are crossing the threshold theologically from the dispensation of grace that we've been living under for some 2,000 years. Thank God for His grace Thank God for a time of grace, a season of grace, what the theologians call the dispensation of grace. But we are shifting from that. We are crossing the threshold into the last days. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, in the last days, peerless times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves. Oh, did you say selfie? <laughs> Men shall be lovers of themselves, coveters, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, truce breakers, incontinent, fierce, heady, high-minded, traitors, lovers of self more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. There are plenty of churches, plenty of churches in America where there's no preparation, where there's no prayer, just performance. You can find those anywhere. And when the real persecution begins, when the real chaos breaks out, we've just come through a little season of testing to see how um, submissive we would be. When the real persecution comes, when the real test comes, when they come at us with guns and tell us what we will and will not do, Oh, you're thinking it won't ever happen in America. Oh, you need to read your Bible. You need to read history. I know you don't want to hear that. Then we have to be ready. We have to be ready. We have to be spiritual warriors, trained and equipped and prepared for the last days. He's promised the last day revival. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're waiting for. When he said he would pour out his spirit on all flesh... He said, sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men will start dreaming dreams. Young men will see visions. You can tell how old you are if you're having dreams or visions. That's what the Bible said. Old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. 
Pray for those visions. I don't know, maybe a vision's when you're awake and a dream's when you're asleep. That's some folk. But he said in the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit. I believe there'll be some, some powerful people of God. They don't have to be preachers. They don't have to have a church and be a pastor. They don't have to carry a family Bible under their arm, but I believe there'll be some powerful, anointed people that will walk down some halls of some hospitals and people will just start getting healed. I believe that we will see people under conviction in the grocery store, at the service station, at the fuel station, at the at the job place, in the cubicle, get on their knees and say, what must I do to be saved? But if we're going to be ready for those days, we must get up. In Matthew chapter 9, they brought a paralyzed man to Jesus. Somebody said he couldn't walk. They brought this man to Jesus, and, and he was on his mat. He was paralyzed. I don't know if he just laid flat. I don't know if he turned over on his side. But he had a mat, the Bible said. Some translations say a cot. Some say a mat. I can't imagine in those days that he had a motorized bed. I think it was probably dirty from laying on the street and probably had to beg sometimes and somebody would help put him there and he would stay there all day and he could not walk, he could not get up, he could not go to the bathroom, he could not take a lunch break. He was laying on his mat paralyzed and some of you have legs but you are paralyzed you are on your mat you are in your mess you are in your situation you are in your circumstances and when the Lord speaks to you and nudges you to get up and do this and do that and do his bidding and pray for somebody and love somebody and reach out to somebody y'all ain't saying nothing you are stuck paralyzed on your mat And Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your stretcher, pick up your mat, pick up your bed, and go home. What if he had been like a lot of us? What if the paralyzed man had been like us and looked at Jesus and said, what are you talking about? How can I get up? Do you not see I'm paralyzed? Do you not see that I cannot walk? Do you think I want to be here? Do you think I chose this? I cannot help my circumstances. Don't you feel sorry for me? It didn't change what Jesus knew. It did not change the words of Jesus. Jesus said, get up, pick up your stretcher, and go home. But Jesus, do I have to explain it to you again? I cannot walk. I'm a cannot. It's who I am. It's who I am. I'm a cannot. I cannot walk. I cannot go. I cannot take care of myself. I cannot obey. I cannot. What if he had done that? Because in reality, that's where he had lived. 
that's who he had been. Nothing had changed except the Word of God. He was still on the mat. He was still filthy. He still had no resources. He still had not seen the doctor and gotten a report. Oh, you're okay. Go home. He had none of those things. And so are many of us on our mat. The difference is we've already received the word of God. We're waiting on somebody to help us. We're waiting on somebody to feel sorry for us. We're waiting on somebody to see us. We're waiting on somebody to give us some money. We're waiting on somebody that wants to come beside us and say, I feel so sorry for you. But we already have the word of God. He's already, to to he's already told us, I have sent my Holy Spirit. I died on the cross. He's already said, it is finished. And we still say, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. You want me to do what? I cannot. You want me to go where? I cannot. You want me to say what? I cannot. You want me to talk to who? I cannot. You are the only thing standing between some people on their way to hell. You better go to them. You better talk to them. You better say something to them. You better be what you're supposed to be. Oh, I cannot. What would people think if I said that? What would people think if I did that? What would people think if I went there? What would people think? I cannot. My God. Jesus said, get up, buttercup. Extra word was mine. But that's what he wanted to say, I'm sure. Get up, buttercup. Suck it up, buttercup. I've already given you the word. The word is get up. Get up. Why are you staying there? Why are you in your pity? Why are you in your misery? Why are you in your pain? Why are you in your circumstances? Why are you in your past? Get up out of your past. Jesus said, get up. Pick up your stretcher. Pick up your man. Why didn't you just leave it there? If he had left it there, never seen it again, he would not be reminded of what he used to be, of what God did, of what God said. Every time he looked at that mat, it was a testimony. Jesus said, get up. He probably said it kinder than I do. Jesus probably said, get up, pick up your mat, go home. Because everything changed with the word at that moment. Everything, you didn't hear me, everything changed. Everything changes with the word of God. When you get a word from God, everything changes. When Dr. Shirley and Pastor A were with us in February and we were talking and I just dropped it, I said, maybe, all, maybe you should think about moving here and helping us start a school. It wasn't my word. It was the word of God. We got a prophetic word to start a school, to launch a school of ministry, to train and equip remnant warriors for these last days, for what we are going to face. And when we spoke that word, it was in agreement. Everything changed. They uprooted themselves from Texas, from Tyler, Texas, and moved to Chattanooga, Tennessee because the word was spoken and everything changed. 
And we get a word and we say, God, give me 10 more. Was that really you? Did you really say, did you really mean it, Lord, or was it just a suggestion? What are you saying? I don't know what you mean. I don't understand. We come up with all excuses and we become, I cannot people. What else do you want Jesus to do? What else do you want him to say? Look at your neighbor and say, you know. You know. You know what he said. You know what you're supposed to do. But yet you're still laying on your mat. You just laid on your mat. You already can wiggle your toes. You already know you're healed. You already know what the call is. You already know what the assignment is. You already know what you're supposed to do. You already know that you can. And you're just stuck. I wish I had some help up in here. Jesus said to the paralytic, get up, pick up your mat, your stretcher, and go home. And he got up. He got up. He got up. I wonder what he was thinking when he got up. I wonder if he took time to roll the mat or if he just got up and looked at his legs and looked at his situation. I wonder if he just got all overwhelmed with emotion. I wonder if he ran to Jesus and just hugged him and wrapped his arms around him and said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I can't thank you enough. I don't have the words to tell you enough. I wonder if he got down on his knees and said, oh, Jesus, 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 look what you have done. Look what you have done. Everybody needs to know. Everybody needs to hear what you've done. Oh, oh, oh Jesus, you've healed me. Look, Jesus, look. Look at my legs. Look at my legs. They work. They run. They they run, they jump. Oh, I'm not healed. I'm not paralyzed anymore. I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. But Jesus said, get your mat. I wonder if he went back to it and said, but, but Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. I praise you, I praise you, I bless you, I bless you. What can I do for you? How can I ever repay you? Oh, going home but before I get home I'm gonna go through the hospital and I'm just gonna tell them look what the Lord has done he healed my body he touched my mind If I could sing like Adam and Zeus, right now I'd sing, He touched my body, He, he touched, touched my, my mind, He, he saved, saved me, me, and it was just, just in time. I'm gonna I'm praise, gonna praise the Him each day, it's just the same. I'm gonna praise Him. I'm gonna praise Look Him. What my Lord Look has what done. the Lord, Look what the Lord. What the Lord has done. What the Lord has done. What the Lord has done. He healed my body. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm gonna praise Him. I'm gonna praise Him. Each day is just the same. I gotta praise Him. I gotta praise Him. I gotta praise Him. 
at somebody and say it's time to get up it's time to get up your lack of action your lack of response to the word of God will keep you stuck it will keep you in your mess it will keep you in your situation it will keep you in your circumstances you were not built to stay in the storm. Storms don't last forever. Keep moving through the storm. Sit down. You have to get up and walk away from sin. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short. Of God's glory. Look at your neighbor and say, that means you. But you don't have to stay there. You can get out. If you will just get up. Get up and walk away from your self-pity. Say, well, Pastor, you don't know my situation. You don't know my circumstances. It's no worse than the man that was paralyzed. Get up. Get up. Get up out of your self-pity. Get up out of your situation. Get up out of your rebellion. Is it 1 Samuel 15, 22, 23, somewhere along there that says rebellion is as the sin, the sin of witchcraft. Stop your rebellion. Stop your rebellious attitude. Stop your rebellious words. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Get out of your rebellion. Leave it behind. I'm preaching to somebody. Get up and walk away from your toxic relationships. The Bible says, get wisdom. He that walks with wise people is wise. He that walks with fools Walk away. Walk away. If people show you who they are, believe them. <clears throat> Get up and walk in obedience. 1 Samuel 15, 23 or 22. I got those two mixed up. One of them says rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. The other one says to obey is better 
and sacrifice. Get up and walk in obedience. Walk in a new dimension of faith. Of faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, you cannot please Him. Lest you worry, read Romans. Romans 12. Romans 1. God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. When you were born, He made a deposit in you of faith. Paul said in Romans 1, I long to come to you that I might impart to you some spiritual gift that is faith, that you and I might be encouraged together. You can get faith by hanging out with other people of faith. And then it said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So walk in a new dimension of faith. Just lift your hand right now and just declare this. Faith is rising in me. Say it. Faith is rising in me. Right now, faith is rising in me to move mountains, to speak to the mountain, to slay the giants, to walk on the water, to open the blinded eyes, to open the deaf ears, to heal the sick. In Jesus' name. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up and live blessed. We are blessed and highly favored. In Deuteronomy 28, he talks about being blessed in the city and blessed in the field and being the head and not the tail and blessed when you go in and blessed when you go out. He gives blessings for obedience. He wants us to live blessed. Get up out of your situation and live blessed. Get up and change your atmosphere with worship. Be a praiser. Be a worshiper. When they begin to play... When they begin to worship with the instruments, everything changes. The atmosphere begins to change. When they add the drums, when they add the organ, when they put in the sax, something happens in the atmosphere. When Saul was tormented by an evil spirit, he called for David to come and play the harp. And it changed the atmosphere. You listen to some of the most ungodly music. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said some of you listen to the most ungodly music. And the most ungodly things come out of your mouth. And you wonder why you're tormented. You wonder why you're dealing with demons. You wonder why you're dealing with evil. You wonder why you are battling curses. You bring some of it on yourself. Change the atmosphere. Change the atmosphere. Put on some Christian. We don't leave our house without leaving Christian praise worship playing in our house. When I go back in my house, the atmosphere is set. It's set. When I get in my car, I'm listening to Christian music. I'm listening to J103. Or I'm listening to Adam sing or Olivia sing. I'm listening to music that changes the atmosphere. The time has come. It's not coming. The time has come. It is here that we must get up and change the atmosphere if it's going to be changed with our worship. We have to get up and take our mat with us. And on the way home, we need to stop by the hospital. On the way home, we need to pray for somebody at the cubicle. On the way home, we need to give somebody a free tank of gas and tell them Jesus loves you. I love this one. I really wanted to start with this one, but I felt like we needed to end with it. Isaiah 52, 2. Shake off the dust from yourselves. I'm, I am past worried about what somebody thinks or what somebody says. I 
I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided I'm going to be full-blown Pentecostal. You can love it or not love it. You can say, does it really take all of this? I I don't care. I'm past that. Because I sense in my spirit where we are in the spirit realm. I sense the war that we are in. Maybe you don't sense it. Maybe you think everybody's, everything's just pie in the sky. But folks, we are headed into the greatest war we've ever seen. We are headed into the battle. He's also promised the last day revival. That is going to be a part. But the storm is coming. The storm is brewing. Chaos is on every hand. Why do you think the Antichrist who's coming to bring world peace. How can he come bring world peace if everything's peaceful? The enemy is going to stir it up and create world chaos like we have never seen before. So when the Antichrist comes on the scene, he can show up and be perceived as the Messiah has come to bring world peace. And oh, he'll bring world peace. And everybody, oh, everybody's going to bow down and worship him and think that he's great. He's going to do miracles. The Antichrist I'm talking about, he will do miracles. He'll call fire from heaven. He will heal people. He will do all kinds of miracles. And everybody's going to say, oh, look, he's the Messiah. The long-awaited Messiah has come. The Jewish people have been looking for him. They're going to say, he has come. He's here. Oh, we're going to worship him. And they will all be deceived. Because he is the Antichrist, the Bible says. He is not the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. He's already come. He's coming back. But when the Antichrist sets up an image of himself in the temple in Jerusalem to be worshipped, the Jews are going to go, wait a minute. Wait, wait just a minute. They're going to go to their Bibles. This is the Bible. They're going to go back to Exodus. They're going to go to Exodus chapter 20 and start reading the Ten Commandments. And they're going to read, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not worship any false idol. Worship only the Lord our God. Only Him. And they're going to say, something's wrong. And when that happens, let me prophesy. All hell. It's about to break out. So back to Isaiah 52. I, I wish I'd had time to preach today. I know that paralytic man. He had all kind of miracles and all kind of fun going home. Carrying his mat, showing that to everybody. I don't have time for that. But right now, I want to tell you. You have to shake the dust from yourself. Satan has tried to cover you with dust. He has little by little just covered your eyes, covered your body. And to the point that some, the rains would come and it has caked on you. And you have become stuck in the mud, stuck in the, he said, shake the dust off yourselves and get up captive Jerusalem get up free yourself he didn't say wait on somebody to come free you he didn't say wait on somebody to give you a hand up he said for us to free ourselves shake off the dust and free yourselves from the chains that are around your neck captive people of Zion So I stopped in here today to prophesy to you, to you, sir, to you, ma'am. If you are here, it is highly likely that God has placed his finger of anointing on you to be a part of his last day remnant church. And he wants you to shake off the dust. He wants you to stand up, to get up and to free yourself from the chains that are around your neck. And he wants you to be free, to be free, to be free. He wants you to get up out of your pain.
and get up out of your past and get up out of your perversion and get up out of the poison in the relationships he wants you to get up out of whatever's been holding you captive i'm telling you it's time to get up it's time to stand up it's time to arise and stand up and get up in the name of jesus he has called you he has anointed you for such a time as this everybody get up on your feet take action Get up now. Get up and lift up your hands like lightning rods and worship him and adore him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up out of your grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up out of your grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up out of your grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. I wish I had about 25 just to come down here and just begin to shout and dance and rejoice. Getting out of the grave, getting out of the past, getting out of the pain, getting out of the trouble, getting out of the storm, getting out of the circumstances, getting out of the sickness, getting out of the disease, getting out of the poverty, getting out of whatever has kept you bound. Come on, praise him. Get up 